repeated UN calls for both sides to exercise restraint, the hostilities have not ceased. Iraq claims to have carried out more than 130 air raids yesterday and to have shot down two Iranian jets, one of them this F-4 fighter, the remains of the Iranian pilot trapped inside. Iraq's Saddam Hussein has been active in honoring his army's field commanders, whose string of recent military triumphs tilted the war decisively in Baghdad's favor. For his reward, the Iraqi leader took pleasure on hearing Ayatollah Khomeini's first statement today that acceptance of a ceasefire was more deadly than taking poison. Khomeini said that ending the war was solely in the interests of Iran. But this public endorsement from the Ayatollah that Tehran is steering a new course that might put the two enemies on the road to peace has yet to manifest itself on the battlefronts. Iraq is in the throes of celebrating the 20th anniversary of the revolution that brought President Saddam, as he is universally known, to power. Saddam is the most pervasive image in Baghdad. He stares out from giant hoardings everywhere. But if the capital's dour street scenes are anything to go by, nothing has changed among these war-weary people who want, but as yet dare not believe, the conflict can be ended by the UN effort. There's no sense of victory here, and official reaction from President Saddam Hussein's ruling Revolutionary Council has so far been restrained. The muted response is hardly surprising. The Gulf War has cost Iraq a massive expenditure in blood and crippled the economy. Public and private opinion believes that Tehran is not sincere about peace and that a ceasefire does not necessarily mean an end to the war. So Iran's apparent willingness to silence the guns after nearly eight years of carnage is at best being viewed here with deep suspicion. It shows few tangible signs of a city at war. For nearly eight years, it has been a matter of government policy to keep Baghdad isolated from the effects of the war and so preempt any anti-war sentiment. The wail of an all-clear siren after a rare air raid alert yesterday was one of the only indications in the capital that the fighting had flared up over the weekend. Iraq's new offensive came in spite of pleas from the Arab states, the US, and the Soviets to show restraint. The Iraqis said they wanted to liberate all of their territory before any ceasefire, and they wanted to capture as many Iranians as possible to improve their bargaining position when it comes to exchanging prisoners. Iran still holds twice as many Iraqis. Here in Baghdad today, they are scoffing at the notion of being driven back by the Iranians. The Iraqis say they are now withdrawing, they have no designs on Iranian territory, and that they still support the UN ceasefire resolution. However, their recent actions do raise some questions about that commitment. Can I say that you definitely do accept the UN resolution, that you will eventually agree to a ceasefire? Yes, we accept the uh, full uh, resolution in its entirety and in the way it was worded and the way it was issued. President Saddam Hussein, the ever-present, all-powerful, absolute ruler of Iraq, strangely has not spoken publicly since Iran agreed to the ceasefire. He has been shown on television directing the latest offensive. Some diplomats here fear he might be tempted to try for an absolute victory to justify his initial invasion. However, it's clear most Iraqis would be happy to end the war now. The war is not finished yet, but God willing, it will end soon. This is the big aim for Iraqi, for Iraqis people, when the, the war is finished, because all the peoples love the peace. Because we are uh, succeeded in this war, we are happy. Though the capital is nearly unscathed, Iraq has paid a heavy price for this war, what could be a healthy economy, has at least a $50 billion war debt. And, of course, at least a quarter of the estimated one million casualties are Iraqis.